So the mean is symbolized by the x bar. And again, it could be a subscript like x, the average age, the average weight, the average height, but just x bar refers to the mean in general. And the, symbol, and the formula for the mean, which everybody knows, is back out of the fifth grade, sixth grade, you add together all the numbers and divide by the number of numbers. So that's the mathematical way of saying what I just said in English. And the numbers, let's take a really small example of x equals 2, 4, and 6. So the sample size is 3. So the average is you add them all together. The, the sum, okay, this, Greek, this capital sigma refers to the sum of a bunch of data. So the sum is equal to 12. So 12 divided by the sample size, 12 is equal to 4. In this case, the average happened to come out exactly the middle number. If this number would have been a 7, and instead of being a 12, this would have been a 13, so the average would have been 4.33 in that case, I think. Right? So which means that, that, that proves that the average doesn't have to be one of the original numbers. It could be someplace close to the middle. It turns out the average is a great formula. It's probably the most, not probably, definitely the most single important formula in all statistics. You have to learn one formula. And of course, everybody knows that by the fifth or sixth grade, so it's not really, I'm not teaching you too much about that. But it has some very nice properties, which makes, besides being really simple to calculate, besides being really simple to understand, which are great advantages, it has some deeper properties called efficiency, sufficiency, um, it's unbiased, uh, has other properties, such as if you take a bunch of averages and you graph them, you're going to get a bell-shaped curve. There are a lot of nice properties which makes the average a great formula to use, and we use it in all statistics. If it's such a great formula, why do we need any other formulas? Well, there are many, many examples of central tendency, the geometric mean, the median, the mode. Why do we need any other kind of formula if the average is such a great formula? So the answer, obviously, is that there is a situation where the average gives you a misleading answer, and there's got to be a better formula to give you the right answer. Can somebody think of a situation where the average will give you, yes, Sarah? Um, out, outliers. When there's a, who do you have in stat one? Lichtenstein. Oh, you talked about outliers? Yes. Good, thank you. Uh, when there's outliers, if for example, if you're trying to calculate, let's give a really quick example. Let's say I was trying to figure out the average salary, that the average, the average income that families whose children attend St. John's make. In other words, it's the kind of question that board of trustees or the presidents or anybody would want to know about. What is the average income of people going to St. John's? So you take a, you can't call 20,000 people and expect to get an answer. You can't call 100 people and say. How much is your family make? Does that make 95,000 a year? How much is your family? We make 45,000 a year. How much is your family? I make 300,000 a year because, you know, whatever. Next family makes uh, 95,000 again and 65,000 and 145,000 and 25,000. All the different numbers. And among one of those 100 families, there's somebody whose father works on Wall Street who makes $20 million a year. Okay? So you add together 65,000, 25,000, 45,000, and you add in. 20 million at the bottom, and add them all up and divide by 100, what's going to come out to the answer? Instead of saying, you know, you know, the average family at St. John's makes $800,000 a year, or something like that, which of course is a crazy answer. It totally messed up the sample. So what do you do in that case? It turns out it's a very difficult thing to put it, you know, you can't, if you say, well, if I have a number that's really strange, I'm going to take it out of the sample. If you think about it, you can prove whatever you want. Whenever you don't like a number, you just take it out of the sample. So it's really dangerous to do that. On the other hand, if you leave it in, you're going to get a misleading answer. So there's no simple solution to it, but one solution is to calculate the median. So the next formula we're going to learn about is the median, and the median is a formula which basically has the advantage that the outliers do not affect it. So what's the symbol for the median? The symbol for the, for the mean is x bar. What's the symbol for the median? There is no symbol, at least in the book. There are other books have a symbol for it. What's the formula for it? Here's the formula for x bar. What's the formula for it? There is no formula for it. All I can do is tell it to you verbally, and then you'll have to just work out each example. It's that number which satisfies the following property. Now, it turns out sometimes there's one answer. Sometimes there's more than one answer. Sometimes there's no answers. But this, this is the definition. Whichever number has the property that it takes all the numbers and splits it down the middle 50-50. In other words, if you can take the entire set of numbers that you're looking at and split them right down the middle, fit it. half the numbers are below that median and half the numbers are above that median, then you found the median. So let's, take two, let's do this by a few examples. So if you have 2, 4, and 6, which number has the property that it splits it right down the middle? The answer is 4. In this case, there's only one right answer, and the answer is 4. So 4 is equal to the median. How do you prove that it's the median? Well, how many numbers were lower than 4? There was one person, three people took a quiz. One person got lower than 4. One person got higher than 4. So the 4 really splits it 
What if the six was a 6,000? What would be the 60,000? What would be the median now? Raise your hand if you want to answer. Yes, four. Roger. What? Four. The answer is still, still four. Four is one person below four and one person above four. So the fact that it's a 60,000 is irrelevant. So you can see right away how the median deals with the problem of outliers. I'm going to pass this back to Roger, who happens to have his name out. Again, you guys who don't have a name out, you're certainly welcome to ask questions if you participate. You're just not going to get uh, these points for it. Um, OK, now, what about the numbers where, now we're going to go through several examples. Let's say that the, 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 the problem was 2, 4, 6, and 9. What's the median now? Raise your hand if you want to give the answer. Yes, Michael? It's going to be 5. Let's see. Well, because we have an even number of numbers, there's no physical middle number as it was in the previous example. So there are two middle numbers. So the answer, one way of doing it, the best way probably, as Michael said, is to take the average. What's the average of 4 and 6? 5. And therefore, if you put down 5 as the median, you'd be 100% right. In fact, it's probably the best answer. But if somebody put down another number on a test, I'd have to give them full credit for it. Because somebody give me another number that satisfies the definition of a median, namely half the numbers are below it, half the numbers are above it, besides 5. So 5, I'm not, I'm not criticizing 5. I'm just saying that there are possible other answers in this case. Yes, Alex. 5.5, Let's try 5.5. How many, the, way the, the proof is, let's see, how many people scored lower than 5.5 in this particular test? Two people scored lower than 5.5. How many people scored higher than 5.5? Two people, so 5.5 is immediate. So you can, you can see from what about 5.6? It's also, what about 5.53? There's an infinite number of possible answers. So if you have to choose among them, which is the best answer, I would say five is the best answer. But but certainly, there are other possible answers. It's a little bit of a strange situation if there's more than one right answer. Now comes a situation where there is no right answers. Maybe not right away, but eventually we're going to get. So let's try another bunch of numbers. Five, six, nine, and nine. What's the median now? Yes, uh, six. Here, there's only one middle number, and again, the answer is six. Here, it's not. It looks maybe it looks It looks challenging, but it's the answer is simply 6, and that's the right answer. Okay, now I'm going to change one little number, and you're going to see we're going to hope the whole class will get a little bit like come to a standstill. I'll change this 9 to a 6. Okay, so in the previous example, the answer was was 6. Now, what's the answer now? Raise your hand, somebody else. Yes, that's 6. 6. Oops, I don't know. You finish your tent? Okay. All right. Uh, the answer, by the way, is yes, six, yes, and no. So we'll, we'll continue discussing this next time.